little above the one I showed you the last time. I already got some palettes on the floor ready, so without further ado, let's get into it. And remember, we still got to get to the two drawers that are right there that are full of stuff as well. So it's going to be a long series, girl. Okay, y'all, so let's get started. I found the one I was talking about last time. I didn't draw it wasn't there, so I found my Kaleidos flower pump. So I think I showed up first because I was supposed to be in Georgia, you saw. Yesterday. Or last time I should say, not yesterday. Um, so this is what it looks like. It's just you know a mixture of 420, um, what is it? Smoke sessions and um, millennial pink. So that's what it looks like. Um, Kaleidos. Then I have a new palette that I just got in the mail. That I literally just did a review on today, the day you're watching this. So it'll be Saturday. I have the sweet as honey can be palette. This is from. Of course, ColourPop with their um, new collection, their um, Winnie the Pooh collection, not their new collection. I'm waiting on the Star Wars collection to show up. This is what she looks like on the inside. Cute little simple neutral palette. Um, you have to wait to give out a review. I'm not going to give thoughts on it here because we know what's the point of the review. Um, what's the point of you watching the review? I'll tell you what I think. Here's the Feral palette. It's supposed to be enjoyed with the first stuff. I thought I had left my comments down. Apparently, I just left it on the top of my dresser. So, here's what she looks like on the inside. That's a cute little, you know, nice color story there. I actually feel like it's similar to something else I'm about to go film with when I get done filming this. Which, I'm going to definitely need strength for because it's about to be a long night. Have the color trip. You all already saw the video on this one. One of y'all asked me to compare this to another palette and do a same, similar look with it to see if they need to get this palette or not. So, I actually brought it home to make sure I could go through my palettes and see. So, I'll be trying to film that next week. Just like in the comment section that I told that person about. But, here's what she looks like on the inside. I feel like it looks similar to a few of my colorful palettes though, so I feel like it shouldn't be hard to dupe it out my drawer this is of course the blend buddy cosmetics palette so i'm starting with the blends palette of course this is the one sitting on the very top i usually try to stick my palettes in the order in which they came out so blends palette right here here we go um this is what she looks like absolutely stunning i wasn't gonna get it but everybody kept raving about it. my girl um mariah um gold i believe it is here on youtube is talking about it. and then, of course my girl karen harris is talking about it so then i had to get it this is the Surge palette. This is the one that everybody has been lusting after and wanting so badly. Um, I actually compared it to the Norvina one I said I wasn't going to get, but I was trying to find um, people comparing it everywhere and nobody was comparing it, so I ended up getting it when it's for sale. I'm not going to do a review on it or show any of those palettes, so because like I told you, I'm not you know, trying to be out supporting or talking about the brand with what's going on and the information I heard and found out. I'll try to leave the video linked. Um, down below in my comment section about it if you're interested in what I'm talking about but um I think it's Kayla Claus posted a video about them having some ties with Putin and I wasn't feeling so savory about that so you won't see any of their palettes today besides the Jackie Iron one because we're gonna get some made by Mitchell now so this is the head in the clouds this is the one I didn't want but I ended up getting because I think I got it 50% off during box day when he had a sale at the beginning of 20 21 or 2022 i forgot which year it was but um i believe it was 2021 this is what it looked like on the inside i find it difficult to um figure out what i look to do with that palette which is why i really felt a reach for the one i really want is the one i'm showing you next with his feet on the ground of course when you see the color story you understand why i wanted it this is more of my color story for sure i think this is a gorgeous palette i absolutely love it and when i have to reach for one of those i always reach for this one although i do like the color story of the new one as well that i'm about to show you it's called if you want some mama milk as you can see it says it on the screen on top of it this is what it looks like on the inside i am okay with this palette i'm not super excited about it though because it has like a, a lot of neutrals going on like i feel like this whole neutral session here and then part of this is neutral and they just add this pop of green to make it seem like it wasn't but i feel like this one is more neutral than the other two i showed you i don't know maybe it's just me but i haven't played this one nearly as much as i played with feet on the ground which is my favorite one if you haven't figured out about it now next I have Carnival 3, love Tahiti, and I hate huge palettes, but I've just shown you a few huge palettes because I feel like the formula on them is worth it, and the inside of this one should explain why I have it. You look at it, it's simply stunning. I actually want to compare this to the Makeup by Elena palette because I feel like they have a lot of similar tones in there, but the good thing about this one, it doesn't have pressed glitters, and unfortunately, the Makeup by Elena one has three. So now that I have shown it to you all in this video like I planned on, I can take this over to my grandmother's house to compare it when my Makeup by Elena finally shows up, whenever that would be, God only knows, I don't. Um... 
Okay, next, I have the Carnival 4 palette, the Antidote. Now, I ended up getting this because I think I ended up getting it for like 30% off during Black Friday. And I gave y'all a video on it. I wasn't going to rush to get it, obviously, because it's like warm tones and cool tones. This is her for... This is her version of Nutri Palette, and it seems to be more warm tone. I don't know why I said cool, I guess, because I was thinking about the green. But I used mainly this side. I think I did one look with reds and then one look with greens. But as a general rule, if I reached for this palette, I would most likely use the greens and maybe use, like, a pop of orangish um, or red or something like that. But the quality is the same as all the other quality of all her other palettes. I just wasn't excited about this one because of the um, color story. So let me show you that now. The um, Disney... Um, color collection this is the first collection not the second collection so i have the first three palettes from the first collection um like i was saying if you didn't know alice one man is one of my favorite disney movies of all time so um i was happy that they came out with one for her movie in particular and i feel like this is a movie people didn't like pick i feel like um color pop could be a, do a good job of coming out with alice in wonderland if they came out with one but this is what the color story looks like i've actually used all three of these palettes believe it or not i just combined them with different palettes because of course they're all mattes and you know that's not gonna work i need some shimmer in my life it's rare that i do all oh, man i love it even if i do i still need some shimmer in my inner corner next we have dumbo dumbo is my dad's favorite movie if anyone cares but this is what it looks like on the inside I think I ended up using the blue, the red, and this yellow in this one, but I didn't touch these three tones right here, so. From what I remember, I feel like I, that's what happened, so we're gonna go with that. And the last one I have is the Jungle Book. Um, I wasn't a huge fan of the Jungle Book, but you know, like, it was what came with the palette, and oddly enough, oh, I was about to say, I thought this one came out when I was born, but no, it's a 68, not 87. I'm not saying 67, not 87, but this is what it looks like on the inside. I don't remember what colors I used in this one, but I know I remember using all three of these palettes in particular, so they have been used. I try to make sure I don't have a whole bunch of stuff in my collection that has not been used, because, you know, although I do have to review a lot of palettes, there's no point of buying it if it didn't get a chance to be reviewed. So next we have the Hen Dash, uh, what is this, Monochromance palette. I was kind of disappointed in this just because the colors came off so soft, but I mean, I, I don't know what I was expecting. I guess I expected them to be more pigmented, and then they weren't, but I guess they have to be soft-pressed in the pan in order to get the grading that they have. I'm not sure. I haven't tried them with blushes, and I dare not swatch this because I already saw the horror story that came with um, Lauren made Beauty's palette, but my whole thing was like, looking at a palette like this, there's no way hell I'd ever try to swatch it just because I feel like it would do exactly what it did to her. That's why I don't like to do swatches, by the way, if you already know, it's because I don't want my stuff to get hard paint if I bought it to use it on my eyes, and I just swatch it for a few moments and it gets fucked up. So that's why I don't do swatches in general, but anyway. Next, we have the Dominique Cosmetics Latte Palette. She does not make this palette anymore. She doesn't make this one, our latte too, the one you saw at my grandmother's house. She doesn't make a lot of her palettes anymore, believe it or not. I think she's rebranding and doing a whole bunch of new palettes, so the older palettes had to go. But I'm glad I have all the older palettes because she has one of my favorite um, brands and favorite um, eyeshadow formulas. I've heard some people say they don't like it, but I really like it. This was the very first one she came out with. Next, we have Berries and Cream. This was one of my all-time favorite ones from her brand. From the original one she came out with before she started on this new chapter with the new palette she has now. So this is what it looks like on the inside lovely color story to me this is more a romantic color story with like a pop of blue in it because if you take the pop of blue out you notice it's just a whole bunch of romantic colors but the pop of blue and the black to me give it a little um more versatility because it's like you can run this on lower lash line to use with like the neutral brown she has in here or you can just make a black um spooky eye and put this nice shimmery shade in the inner corner but i really like the palette it was one of my favorites. My second all-time favorite one from her brand is Celestial Storm. This is when she played with a lot of fun colors, and I was here for it. Like, you have your nice little cute, cool tone quad over here with colorful shades, and you have your nice warm tone quad over here with more of the earthy tone shades, if you will. So I really like this palette, and I'm sad she got rid of it. Plus, I love this dual chromy shade right here. This is just a gorgeous palette, and I love to use it. Ella. Next, we have the um, Dominique cosmetics coral bloom palette this is what she looks like on the inside this reminds me of mother's um utopian dream palette that everybody's so excited about and then they found out it was just more um corally rosish tone shades now obviously the purple in here isn't going to be as nearly as dramatic as mother's is but i really like the fact that this shade is quite pigmented i'll try to remember to link up above the video i did comparing this one to mother's palette because i did do a battle of the when i saw and felt like it looked similar um i went ahead and did it so next we have her newest palette called 
the moment as you can see she upgraded the packaging and she did this acrylic packaging as opposed to the last one that you saw the coral bloom because it has the same type of packaging but it's not acrylic it just has the same kind of design if you will and this is what it looks like on the inside so i think this is absolutely stunning I actually have this palette on my eyes right now alongside another palette to compare. I'm doing a new eyeshadow series. I told you all about I filmed the second video on it, but I still haven't put the first one up because I'm trying to come up with a title for it. But um, I'm not doing so great. So it's going to go up, I think, next week or the week after whether I have a title or not. And then hopefully you all can help me with the title once you see what the series is about. Because I'm telling y'all, I feel like I'm lost and I haven't come up with anything. I have four of those. We have the um, number two, the coral palette. So this is a cute little orangish, reddish type pink situation. You got your one little brown neutral shade. I hate when they do that, when they give you like a super deep neutral shade to put with all these colorful shades. It's like, I don't want to put this brown with this coral shade. I hate when they do that, but they always have a tendency to do that. But the shimmers in here are stunning, and I think this is a cute palette, so I go ahead and keep it. Because I, if I remember correctly, there's another palette in this set that has a deeper tone that'll work better with the tones and that one I can just do a palette mashup. So that's why I keep it. But number three is platinum. Of course, a smoky eye lover's dream. And look how gorgeous that silver is. Now, this one I actually have not used yet. But that's because it's similar to the side-by-side -side palette. And I usually just grab the side-by-side -side because I feel like I have a little more options in there. Whereas I only have these two mattes to work with and the rest of the shimmers. So that's why I reached for it over this one. So this one I actually have not used. But that's rare in my collection. You'll notice everything in my collection has usually been used. So this is the Wild Berry palette. This is one I was talking about I can use with that other palette I just showed you. I don't know how I ended up nicking that. When I first got it, I had to press this down because that one came shattered. And I had Alta send me another one. But I gave the new one to you all in the giveaway, of course. So that's what I normally do when I get extra palettes or another palette i'll just give it to you instead of reuse it but you see what i'm saying like it has these deeper berry tones in it so this one and this one i can use with that same palette for the outer b and then i have this gorgeous ameth what amethyst 2.0 shade sorry alchemy 2.0 shade to use on the lid so i am going to do a palette mashup with those eventually Next, I have the sh number six, Midnight. I had the other one, but I think I ended up putting it in my pile to sell to put on my Poshmark on my card because I just don't um, use those tones. It was a warm tone palette. Y'all know I'm a cool tone queen, and this blue palette was perfect for me. But I ended up getting them in the um, trend mood box, so I ended up getting everything that came in that box because it was the takeover box so that's how i ended up with both palettes otherwise i'd have just bought this one but i'm i'm glad to have i was glad to be able to try both of them for you all in the video for those of you who watch me who do like warm tones i'm just not a warm tone person next let's get into the bigger palette so i still have the original dreamy palette this is actually the first one i bought and oddly enough i bought this because mariah leonard was waving about how nice Napa's formula was so she was her and i think it was jay kiss were the ones who started the community on really being into this brand because her and jay kiss were like uploading more i don't know what happened to her and jay kiss recently i think she showed up mariah leonard showed up in my um section a while ago i think were her current favorites are her sephora recommendations and sephora haul and I was like, oh, yeah, that's right. She used to make videos. I hadn't seen them forever. But this is the first time I bought from them based upon her recommendation. Then she said she didn't like the Soul Blooming that much. But I love the color story of the Soul Blooming. So I went ahead and bought it. Like this cool periwinkle shade here is really what attracted me to this palette. Along with the like pinkish tones in it. Because the rest of them are kind of neutral. If you haven't noticed, it's like one, two, three, four, five. And again, here they go with this dark brown. Why would I put a dark brown with a periwinkle shade? Like who comes up with these ideas when it comes to palette? Sometimes I'd be like, look, no. But I just want to do a look with this shade and this shade is mattes on the lid. And then maybe dust this on top and put this in the inner corner or something. I think that would be really cool. So, um, hopefully I won't look too ashy. I know when I used this the first time it looked kind of ashy. But, you know, that's because I tried to dust it over instead of using it, like, as a shimmer and just putting it all over the lid. But, you know, nobody do that. Next side-by-side -side palette from Nava. Sorry, side-by-side -side new palette by Nava. And now you see why I said I reached for this one over the, um platinum one I showed you because there's way more options in here than the platinum one. Let me grab it real quick so as if you didn't just see it five minutes ago but see what I'm saying like there's way more shades in this one than the knob one. For example I get the black in the knob one and then this shade I feel like is similar to this one and then this shade is similar to this one plus I have this one and like three other ones so I just find it easy to reach for this one and then if I want a silver I don't know to reach in this one for now because these seem to have more pinky um when it comes to it and then there's this like topish purplish shade but you know i really like this palette i got this in the novel takeover box as well they had the brushes in their whole like holiday set in it so i thought it was quite the steal so i had to go ahead and get while it was on sale 
now. I have, of course, the um, Queen of Hearts palette. I wish that in Boston that they had wrapped it in. It's actually on the palette, but this is what she looks like. This is the brown girl friendly version of the, um, what is it? Um, Modern Renaissance palette, in my personal opinion. So I actually need to take that with me because I had a video idea. Anyway, next I have Cheers to the Beauty. I remember when they kept teasing and teasing and teasing this palette, and then I finally saw it. I was like, y'all tease us all the time for this. I was kind of upset. I mean, the formula on it is nice, and it's highlighted really nice. The sad part is they don't sell this highlighter in individual anymore from what I've seen on their website. So, it's gone, unfortunately. Because I really liked the highlighter, but my whole thing is I'm not going to grab this whole palette just to get this highlighter. Which is what I always thought was a bad idea about this palette. Anyway, um, it's a gorgeous palette. I like the formula on it, and I am going to keep it because their shimmer formula in here was amazing. Top notch. I love me. So, I actually just ordered a custom palette from them because I love the brand that much. And they had, like, custom shadows that he had posted that I like the color story of. So, I actually made that into a palette. And we're going to do a video with that along with new lipsticks that are coming out. I ordered one lipstick. And then, um, I think that was it. So, you'll see when it gets here. This is the Berlin 89 palette. This is what she looks like on the inside. This is the first palette they put a dual chrome in. My mirror is cracked. But if I turn it down like this, you see the shift in it. Because, see, I hold the mirror like that. And it has, like, a different color than it does um, on the front. So, I wasn't that huge a fan of this palette. It was okay, but um, it's not anything exceptional. But I do feel like I could pair it with other neutral palettes that I like. And I'll, you know, like it in that regard. So next I have, uh, of course, Lethal is Dead and Teresa is Dead palette. Or Lethal Cosmetics and Teresa is Dead, Lethal is Dead palette. This is what it looks like on the inside. I wasn't sure about the color story of this when I first got it because I was like, I don't know. But I did a look with all these as like a matte and then i think i did look with this and this in the inner corner and i haven't done a look with i think all three of these yet but i plan on doing some more looks with it. i did a look recently and they actually featured the look i did on their um instagram page i've been featured on lisa's instagram page a couple of times if you didn't know so that was cool because i really like the brand and it's cool that they like me back apparently <laughs> So, this is the Lethal Cosmetics After Dark Palette. This is the first palette that I saw from them. And, of course, I saw my girl Karen Harris with this palette. And I was like, it's a pastel palette. I need it. Because, believe it or not, if you all weren't aware, I love the pastel moment. So, I was excited to get my hands on this palette. Because I was like, it's a pastel palette. I need it. And it's actually a black girl-friendly pastel palette. Which, to me, is a big deal. Because I feel like a lot of times, pastels don't work on us. But, when I find pastels that do, I make sure I tell you all. Like, I have a real on my instagram jlbd7's instagram it shows you which pastels i have in my collection i feel like works best on people my skin tone and since you clearly see my hand is brown that means you know they're brown girl friendly and pastels aren't brown girl friendly so i love this palette just because of that alone plus i love lisa's formula i think it's wonderful and i'm so glad karen put me on to karen put me on to a lot of brands if i mentioned how many times karen put me on brands like you know y'all would just be like well, do you do any research yourself because every time you look up my Karen Harris put you on to a brand, but she does, and I am grateful. That's how I keep up with brands. Karen Harris, and y'all know I love Karen. That's why I always tell you, that's why I always plug Karen's code when I find out about it because she helps me find so many things that I would not even know exists on the internet. So, <laughs> next we have the After Dark palette from Lethal Cosmetics. This is what she looks like on the inside. Again, another stunning palette. I saw Karen with this too, and I was like, When does it come out? I need it. And then I bought it because this is definitely another color story for me. I feel like this would go good with um, Teresa's palette because this darker green can go with the um, other things that I showed you in her palette. And then some of these other darker mattes would go better with the lighter mattes that she shows. Like this shade would go good with that blue that's in the palette with her and then the green. So I actually combined this palette with... Um, an unearthly cosmetics palette for I look and it looks stunning and a lethal again commented on top about how nice it is. I'm like, yeah, I thought it looked really cool. And the funny thing, I was rushing to work, so I was like, actually like then like a crazy lady trying to get it to look right and it actually turned out really nice. So I'm like, maybe I should just rush my nigga more often because it looked bomb. No, <laughs> next I have the Night Flower palette. This is their latest one. And you can actually buy all that stuff at Cam Ready Cosmetics if you don't want to wait for it to ship all the way from berlin because if you didn't know um lethal is in germany so camera ready is here in america and then morgan turner i believe she said she has a 10 percent off code so you can use her code for 10 percent off the brand and then you can get the brand in america and maybe it'll get to you sooner than it gets to me but i always go to their website just because again i found out about them through karen and i want to make sure i get back to karen for you know helping me find out that the brand exists so i always go to their website and use karen's code for that reason but you can go to camera ready if you know you don't want to wait that long 
but if this is not a purple and blue lover's dream which is me like i did a gorgeous look with this palette i'll try to remember the video above about this palette but i really love this palette this is by far my favorite lisa palette of all so like each one i buy they keep getting better and better like i started off with after dark and i love that one then i got um velvet um dusk and then that one's good for fall and then i got this purple one that i can just wear whenever i feel like because i live for purple so lisa was over there doing big things and i'm just glad i found out about them so i could be a part so we're gonna get into those three i have my ethereal bloom he actually has this on sale on his website i think for like 50 percent off so if you want a cute little pastel palette go ahead and grab it i feel like these oxidize a little bit though which is good for me because because of my um skin tone i need my pastels to oxidize so that way they'll still work on some of my skin tones so i'm here for it i love it i have a few palettes i really like i need to update my video because um while um darius's palette set out neon anyway if you all saw in the first video i showed this palette i think it's like literally the first palette i showed in that video so i need to make sure i update my instagram to show people that you know there's one that works for you that was made for somebody that looks like you if you're my skin tone next we have supreme nudes by artist couture and if you all remember i gave you all a video that um forgotten palettes or once hyped palettes where are they now and this definitely was in that because do y'all remember when this first came out during the floor sale and everybody was hyping up this palette i mean everyone was talking about it. i was just like okay god damn um since y'all keep talking about this palette even though we know i'm not into like you know neutrals at all i had wanted to try his formula for a while so i went ahead and bought the bullet and it's a very good formula if you all remember i told you my favorite shade is opulence in here i love the shade mink to put on the outer v and then i use like I believe this transcend to um, dust in my crease. So that's my go-to look with this palette. Believe it or not, I actually don't really use the green that much. I just think opulence is such a special shade because like I don't even worry about the green in there. So that's crazy. Next we have Supreme Malls. I actually just recently did a video on this, so I'll try to link remember to link it up above. I make no promises because this one is kind of older considering how many videos I have to make, considering how many eyeshadow palettes come out often, but I live for the shade Sex Appeal and what is Obscene. Oh my goodness, those two shades alone make this palette worth it for me. And then you have this gorgeous um, plumish looking berry tone and the shade Royal. Like, oh my goodness, this is one of my favorite mall palettes. And the sad part is I've been seeing mixed reviews about people not necessarily liking it. And I'm like, why not? It's wonderful. What do you mean? Like, if it had been the warm tone palettes, then I guess I would understand a little bit better. Because believe it or not, I don't like when he makes warm tones. I feel like the formula isn't as good, but then again, sometimes I feel like it's just in my mind that since I don't like warm tones, that's why I don't think it's good enough. So I have a couple of the small Viseart palettes they just came out with that they made petite versions of the bigger palettes that I already own. I was going to get the cool mattes one, but of course it has already sold out on their website during their 50% off sale. So I'm upset about that because I wanted that one so bad, but I waited too long to get it and now I don't have it. But I do have my petite a dark matte. I got this for when I had like to go on vacations because I really like Viseart shadows. And I have small versions of Pat McGrath stuff and Natasha Denona stuff. So I want to have some small Viseart stuff to take with me when I'm feeling bougie and fancy on vacation. So there's my um, Petite Matte Darks. And there's my Petite Matte, um, what is this? Editorial Bright. Sorry, I don't know why it takes so long to say that. But this is what she looks like on the inside. So... I'm happy to have both these because we know I am a colorful queen. So the fact that I got my colorful shades to take with me on vacation now, I'm a happy lady. Because I had some um, Wet n Wild stuff I was taking with me on vacation and then a couple of Pat McGrath ones along with her ecstasy eye kit. But now I have some more expensive bougie things to take and I'm happy. Next, we have these miniature ones. This is the Violet in Tandu. I feel like it looks really similar in color story to the um, Flight Club palette I showed you all from Menagerie. But um, I feel like the matte formula on these are better than the ones of Menagerie. But I like the shimmer formula of Menagerie and the shifts in them a million times better. So just depends on what your preference is, which one you should get. But this one is currently on sale right now on their website still. So you might want to go ahead and get it. Now I don't know if it's going to be on sale when you see this video. But when I was filming this video, it was still on sale. And it's simply stunning. I think it's like on sale for 26 bucks or something. And I think it's normally like 44 So sounds like a good deal to me. Next I have the Bijouette palette this was one of their holiday palettes from um 2021 last year i ended up getting this one i do want to change one of the shades out though because i don't like the shimmery orange shade but i don't think i have a big enough palette to switch it out with or maybe i do i'd have to check inside the um little ones that they have for 20 dollars because i think they're the same size as this and then hopefully i could switch out that orange shade because that's the only shade in here i'm not really that fond of and maybe get rid of this one because i don't need two similar light shades i don't need that many of that shade it doesn't even back my skin 
but I know this video I have been doing videos a lot. Now here's the bigger version of those small palettes I showed you. Um, here is my dark matte palette. So this is the original packaging that they originally came in. Mine likes to pop out, so I have to like hold it a certain way. I remember one time I was showing this in a video, holding it up, and the whole faceplate literally popped out. So I'm assuming that's why they changed the packaging, because you know when you spend eighty dollars, you don't need your shadows to be popping out. That's not cool. But the formula on this is amazing. I got mine on sale for I think like forty or fifty percent off. So I didn't pay the eighty. I think I paid forty or maybe thirty. It was definitely worth it. I hear if you have um what is that boxy charm thing, you can um get it for like 12 bucks so i would definitely look into that this is the what is it neutral matte milieu this one was more of my speed because of course it has a blue and it has a pink and it is somewhat warm tone but it's not like super warm tone like the warm tone matte one they had and i didn't like the neutral one based upon the colors they chose for it so this is the one that i felt worked best for me and i caught it on sale on their website it was their website or a beauty based website, so I ended up getting it. Next one is the bigger version of the editorial brights I showed you. I really like this palette. However, since I've been using the Grande Pro 3 that I'll show you all in a few minutes. Uh, wait, no, do I have that here? Mm -mm. Yeah, the Grande Pro 3, I'm going to show you in a few minutes. I didn't feel the need to have it. My Grande Pro 2 is at my grandmother's house because I have another eyeshadow video idea, so you won't see that, unfortunately. But, you know, maybe I'll bring it back when I have to do the big ones. I mean, I don't have to do the small drawer so that way you can see it. Next, I have the Dizzy Art Koi palette. This is um, the only other shimmer palette I have besides the Grande Pro 2. I love the shimmers in here. I love the tones of these shimmers. I feel like these will go perfectly with my pastels. So like that um, Creepy Cute palette from, um, what is it brand? Um, Try Out. I feel like this palette would go perfect with it. And I feel like it would go perfect with my editorial brights and just any pastel palette I choose to use just because the tones in it are so beautiful. To me, this screams spring. Like, a palette that is aesthetically pleasing would definitely be one of these. I meant to put it in my video that I did with, um... Eyesh what eyeshadow heaven that um, my girl um, Dr. Ashton Rachel tagged me in to do the tag for it, and I did and you all saw that video already but I think I forgot because it's stacked underneath so many or I might have brought it with me I honestly don't remember this is the Viseart Grande Pro Volume 3 but I know it's aesthetically pleasing for me look at it I want to make a video just about shadows that are aesthetically pleasing but since I already did that eyeshadow heaven tag I feel like I don't really need to go ahead and do that too as you can see this is why I have this one because it has blues it has greens it has these nice reds I don't really care about this warm tone section right here I think I, I don't think I've really dipped into it that much. If I have, it's been the yellow. I'm pretty sure I didn't use the orange. Um, I'm like making tutorials when it comes to green about orange. Ew, I hate orange. I mean, I'll use it looks from time to time if I feel the need to. If I feel like I haven't used it in a while, but as a general rule, I try not to. I don't like the color orange. Just random side note. But this palette is amazing. I caught it on a deal, which is how I ended up getting it. Because one of, of y'all tagged me in it. Matter of fact, it was my girl, Alicia. She tagged me in it. She was like, I know this is you because it's so colorful. And then I saw the price tag. I was like, ooh, 100 I think it's like $177 normally. And I was like, ooh, no. Oh, no. Ma'am, I am not rich. <laughs> Next, I have the um, Jackie Anna ABH palette. I told you I was going to show you it, and as I promised. But look how gross mine is. That just shows that it is well loved. Look at how dirty this thing is. This is one of my most used palettes, easily for sure. I love the shape Wigglies. Um, I actually like the shade Supreme, even though Jackie didn't really like it. I like Trust Issues and Sponsored, of course. I know lots of people like Dwellers. I'm not really that crazy about Dollars. But the shade Zam looks really nice because it looks like it has a lot of glitter reflex in it. And I feel like with these three shades, you can make a decent look. Or and you can do little quads with each look. Either way, I just really like this palette. I love the colors she chose. So, I was happy that she did one for the brown. And she gave us great colors that we could all use. Next, we're going to go into my Patrick Ta palette. So, I have volume one and two of the Major Dimension palette. So, let's take a look at those. Um, so, here's number one. She's quite stunning. I'm so excited he didn't put another sequin shade in here like this and this because people were complaining about him. But I'm glad he listened and didn't give us those shades again. As you can see in this one, I hardly use the creams. But... This isn't really my color aesthetic, so I mean, I bought it to try his formula, but if he had came out with the one he came out with this year first, I'd been all over it, and then maybe I'd have bought this one just because I knew the formula was going to be good, but it, this is what it looks like. As you can see, it has different trimming around the packaging. Oh, sorry, I didn't show you that, but um, the original packaging doesn't have that trim around. And as you can see, I have to use this cream much more than the original. The sad part is I feel like this is marrying me a mid-tone palette. 
but I do like the formula of it enough to use it. So what I do is I just um, pack the cream on and then pack this on top of the cream to make sure it's deep enough to my liking. And then I use the rest of the shimmers in here because they're quite pretty and this is quite a gorgeous palette. I need to leave it sitting down so I can use it some more. But since I have new palette coming, it's hard to like just reach for other things because I want to try formulas and stuff. But since I don't review palettes after um, I do my initial review, I stopped doing that because people didn't really like watch the video so I was like I could make better use of that time elsewhere so I didn't do it so I have all three of the palettes from Temptalia so let's open them up and see this is quintessential the very first one I really like the color store in this one the only one I don't like is on the horizon the middle palette so that's what the first one looks like I guess I'll turn it backwards so that way we can pull each one out and there's not a mirror on in your face Next, I have On the Horizon. So, this is On the Horizon in the middle here, along with Princess Central. Let me adjust that just a little bit there. Bring it back a little bit. Yeah. There it is. I don't know. It's something about the On the Horizon color story I just wasn't that big a fan of. And, of course, we know Radiant Reflection I would like because, I mean, look at it. This is Radiant Reflection. And it has a whole bunch of colorful tones in it, along with colorful shimmers to go with the colorful matte. So needless to say, it's my favorite one. So I like with, um, Radiant Reflection and this one, Quintessential. But otherwise, I'm not really on the horizon train. It's nice, but it's not my personal favorite. And I heard she dedicated this, like, part to her dog that had died or something. And that's what the artwork was supposed to be about, her, her dead dog. I believe I got that right random palettes we're gonna do those i have the lion king with sir john and luminous i really like this palette i heard some people said they felt like the um shadows are pressed too hard in the pan i was fine with it i love the blue and the um green and the purple of course i mean it has a lot of neutral tones in it which i get because they try to go for the more earthy tones but still give you some pops of color so i can appreciate that and appreciate where the inspiration for it came from so i mean i'm going ahead with it but I would prefer to have some colorful masks and these colorful um, shimmers. But, you know, I understand from a makeup artist's point of view why it is the way it is. So, I'm just going ahead with it, y'all. Next, I have the new pop palette from Kevin Aquan. The late, great Mel Thompson is the reason I bought this. I saw her with it and I was like, ooh. And plus, y'all know it's more of my color source, that mauve neutral tone. So, if I had to have neutral tones, I want them to be mauve. I think I said that in the first video, but I'm just reiterating because I don't know which video you all are watching and which order you're watching in because this is actually the third eyeshadow video i've done and i still have two more to do so child i'm tired but this is a gorgeous palette and i am happy to have my collection you can't get it anymore unfortunately so if you did not get it i am sorry for you um i have the Too Faced. what is this Too femi palette this was like their pastelish type palette they came out with this spring i actually ended up getting it and then i think it went up like 50 percent off or something like that um, this is what it looks like on the inside. I actually used the mint and the pink shades to make a pretty nice look. But, you know, I can make the similar look with, um, what do you call her? It's palette. Um, Teresa's Dead's palette with Lethal. I just keep this so I can have something to reference with Too Faced. Because I literally don't think I have any Too Faced to reference in my collection right now. Other than some palettes that they don't make anymore. So I wanted to have something that was at least somewhat current. So that's why I hold on to this. But otherwise, I'd probably get rid of it too. Because it's not anything exceptional or special about it. But I do have um, this Too Faced palette, so maybe I can get rid of it. This is the Natural Nude palette. This is the original one, not the new one they came out with. Although, I probably should get the new one and just declutter this one when it goes 50% off. Because this one has all different tones from their Born This Way foundation. Whereas, the newer one just seems to have more deeper tones than this one does. Which means I can use more of the palette in this one. Again, the late, great Mel Thompson made me buy this one because she was talking about how nice the formula was. And she was right. The formula on this one is much better than a lot of their other palettes. So, when I get good formulas from them, I try to hoard them. That's because I feel like a lot of their formulas are mediocre or the same and a lot of their color stores are really boring. Not to say that this one isn't boring, but the formula on it is good enough for me to keep, which is why it ended up being stay in my collection. Now, this one I will never get rid of. This is the Too Faced Sweet Peach Palette. This is the original one I got when they relaunched it here in America after, you know, everybody went crazy over and went out of stock and, you know, you couldn't get it. This is actually the first high-end eyeshadow palette I got. I got it for my birthday, I want to say, in like 2016, 2017. My grandma bought it for me. And if y'all remember when I first opened my makeup drawers and showed you my makeup collection, you saw her memorial picture in there. So, my grandma died um, last year in July of 2021. So, um, 
This is one of the mega pieces I keep because it was one of the first mega pieces she bought me. And she's the reason I started my makeup journey and why you get to see all these lovely eyeshadow palettes around me. So, um, we will never be getting rid of that one. I don't care if it does get old and moldy. It's just going to be like one of those makeup memory boxes that people talk about. That's where that one's going. Um, next, I have the Dose of Colors Frankation Palette. This is what she looks like on the inside. I actually have two of these because I love it so much. So, this is the untouched one. The one that was touched and used I took to my grandmother's house. In this case, I'm going to use it. And this was like actually my backup because I just love this woman so much. She is one of the first YouTubers I found on YouTube as well. I found her, Kirsten Dominique, Jackie Ina, um, Casey Holmes, and Tina the Fancy Face. They were some of the first YouTubers I found that um, I kind of resonated with and liked their makeup styles. So um, I definitely had to support Desi and get this palette, and I ended up getting two of them. And I absolutely love it. I'm so glad I have it. And I will be hoarding it forever as well. It's one of those things I'm just going to hoard forever. I'm sorry. Some stuff is just going to hoard forever. And that's going to be one of them. The last random one-off palette I think I have. I'm thinking this is the last one. Is the Naked Honey from Urban Decay. Now, I had heard the formula on this was really nice. And I don't own, like, any Urban Decay palettes more than the Born to Run. And the Born to Run, um, I heard is discontinued. And that line has been discontinued. So, I wanted to, again, have something in my collection to reference the brand when I need to and if I need to do a full face of them or something I at least have one palette I wanted to get the wild wild west and it currently went 50% off a while ago but I ended up not getting it I was like I'll just wait till it goes 50% off at Sephora also because it went 50% off on their website which meant I couldn't get free shipping or I couldn't go pick it up in store like I was hoping for so I was like it'll go off 50% off on somebody else's site eventually and I'll just grab it then so I'm just holding on to this one for now I mean the color story of it is nice but it's kind of monotone, so I don't feel like I'll be able to get a whole bunch of different looks out of it. So, that's kind of good for pointing, especially since the darker shade is this one, so I can't do too much of anything with it without comparing, making it a companion palette with something else. So, again, when it's 50% off, I go ahead and buy it, just so I can have something to work with their brand by, but as a general rule, I don't go to my way to buy that stuff, because, you know, it all just seems to be mediocre, since there's so many indie brands out here that can be so much better, why should I... Start from mediocre with them just because they're urban okay so i'll show manny i'll show hooda and then we'll get into um milk cosmetics because i got a whole bunch of those so here is strawberry dream this is my favorite palette from manny if you were not aware look at this color story it is gorgeous i always say this but i was always mad that when sephora sent mine when it was 50 percent off on their website the mine ended up breaking so i didn't like that but this is what she looks like on the inside simply stunning i think he did a great job with this palette and this was the first palette I bought from him because I was not a fan of the um, Life's a Drag palette. So I went ahead and um, got this one when it was on sale because I still wasn't sure about the formula because everybody was talking about how bad the formula was on the Life's a Drag palette. So it made me not want to buy that at a regular price. But after I tried and found out it was great, then I bought them at a regular price. Like next is Moonspell. Now, when I saw the color of of this, I just knew I had to have it. First of all, let's talk about Manny's packaging, how it's always on point. Do you see this? absolutely stunning manny kills it with packaging every time and here's what the color store on the inside looks like this is definitely a color store for me because if i want neutrals i want more cool tone neutrals like this then he has my blues and greens on the top and then he has like pinkish purplish colors at the top so i'm here for it i'm here for it i'm here for it i absolutely love this color store now we'll say i didn't like the formula on this as much as i like the um strawberry dreams one but you know i kept it around because i absolutely love the color story of it and it wasn't like it's bad quality it just to me just wasn't the same as that palette. next we have ethereal eclipse i actually have this on my eyes alongside the dominique cosmetics one i told you all about doing a um new content video i have told you all about so this is what it looks like on the inside i love this palette i love the fact that he gave these bright silver shimmery tones to go with those um blues at the bottom and then gave you some neutrals for when you want to do like a smoky eye so it's like you got your smoky eye neutrals and then you got your colorful smoky eye for people like me at the bottom along with some everyday tones that you can wear if you're in a rush and you need to get eye look done so here for it loving it the last manny palette i have is the newest one he came out which is the moon spell volume two now everybody's talking about how i didn't like the formula on this as much i thought it was okay i didn't think it was as good as his other one but you know i heard he changed factories to whatever so it's probably not the same um, but this is a nice palette. It has a nice color story too. It kind of reminds me of a Plan and Makeup by Yolando palette I saw. I didn't end up getting it. I think it's because I already had this one and this one came out before hers did. So that's how I ended up with this one over hers. But 
I'm sure the quality of hers is just as um, nice as all the other quality of her products if you were interested in it. And then the September Rose one came out that was similar to this that I wanted to get, but I was like, I already have this one, so how many of the same color stores I need to get? I'm trying to get better at not buying the same color stores, but I really want to buy something from September Rose, but it's like I need her to give me a color story that I don't have, which I'm sure is hard because everybody tries to come up with unique color stories and different color stories, and, you know, a lot of people's stuff end up looking the same, so. Mm. Next, I have three Huda Beauty palettes. I swear I had more bigger Huda Beauty palettes, but apparently not. This is the new nude. I remember talking so much crap when this first came out about how I didn't want it. I didn't want another neutral palette or whatever, and here I am sitting with it. But see, I thought she was going to do brown, neutral, warm tone shades like everyone else does. When I found out she was doing my um, form of neutrals, which is mauve, I was like, honey, bring it all to me. And I sure did end up buying this. I think buying this and some other stuff is what ended up making me rouge for the first time. When it's before a VIB sale, but you know, it's cool. I think I've been rouge ever since that happened because, you know, a lot of people in the community had to buy more stuff all the time like I do now. But it's a gorgeous palette, and it's um, the first big size Huda Beauty palette I bought. I had Desert Dust, but I ended up decluttering. And the rose ones I didn't want because, again, I told you all, it's not my color aesthetic. So there you go. Next, I have Mercury Retrograde. I actually do not like this palette. This is my least favorite full-size Huda Beauty palette of all the palettes she's made. Um, I know my Andrea Montanala really likes it, but I prefer the first one I showed you all new news and the new one she just came out Rose Quartz up as opposed to this one. I don't know what it is about this one. I'm just not drawn or excited to use it at all. As you can see, my shade ended up breaking, but it's cool. I, um, you know, I still use it from time to time, but I usually just use it for like the shimmers in here to top on top of other things. Like I'm going to use the shimmers in here to go alongside the Rose Quartz palette because I feel like they look good together. I actually had the Rose Quartz palette on, um... Thursday, I did an eye look with it and the Dollhouse palette from um, Lynn Bunny Cosmetics. So I was really feeling that and like that. This is what it looks like on the inside. I hate this little um, jelly shade she came out with, but I mean, it got her attention last time. So why wouldn't she do it again? It makes her get attention. So I guess she's here for it. All, you know what they say, all press is good press. So. So. I'm finally going to get into all these melt palettes because honey is a stack. So I got a stack of the little ones, I got a stack of the longer ones, and I got the Beauty Juice collection. And the Mari Postis one she came out with last year, so that means it's going to be a few stacks. So, I'm trying to get some stuff out the bag. And I haven't even shown y'all my, um, what do you call them, my um, milk stacks. I'm just showing y'all like the palettes that were made from the stack. So this is my first stack of palettes. Let's slide that up there. Um, this is my Smoke Sessions palette. This is my all-time, one of my all-time favorite um, palettes from Milk. This is what it looks like now i never had the issues with these shades the shimmers falling up in the pan i didn't buy it when it came out on christmas though i ended up having to buy it 420 the year after so maybe they had reformulated by then and that's why mine will puff up but i've never had issues with any of these puffing up and i've traveled back and forth with this as you all know because i don't get to film in my house so i pray to god one day i get to because i'm trying to move stuff everywhere and go everywhere but i mean you really have to and i've been having to do this like six years now so Anyway, that's my favorite palette. Next, we have Radioactive. Now, I actually am not excited about this as I was hoping I would be. They got rid of the um, stack, so I didn't get to buy it before they got rid of the stack. And then there aren't, like, any shimmers in this palette. It's just, like, a whole bunch of mattes, and they seem like these sequin shades. And I think these two may be the only shimmers, and everything else is, like, a sequin or just a matte shade. So I wasn't as impressed with this as I was hoping to be, but I think it's mainly because they put sequins in it, and then they didn't give any shimmers with it. But again, uh, um companion palettes which is why I do um favorite palette combinations videos because I mean like you need to find something to put with this palette unless you want to do all matte looks all the time it's like I don't want to do all matte looks all the time I need to take that one to compare it to something else and put that to the side next is the she's in parties palette so what she looks like on the inside I wasn't really excited to get this palette you think I would be because it's like grungy, ball ish tone, berry tones type shades, but I don't know. I wasn't excited when they came out with this stack, and I didn't buy this stack. I'm not excited for this palette. I rarely, if ever, use this palette. I guess I just have so many other tones in my um, collection I'd rather use, although I do love the shade Skeleton Kiss and shade Strange Love, but otherwise, I don't really care about this palette at all when it comes to, like, my berry mauve tone looks. I don't even think to grab this palette. I feel horrible saying that because I am a milk stand, but, like, to be honest, I was never just excited about that milk color store, so I have to be honest. Next, I have the brunette palette. This is what it looks like on the inside. I did change mine around a bit. I think I took a couple of shades out of um, the blueprint palette. You all have to remember, I do change my milk palettes around just like I change my um, ColourPop palettes around. 
and some of my Natasha Nona palettes around. So I changed some of the colors around in this to make them work for me a little bit better. So I took this one out of, um, I feel like I took the shade out of the Gemini palette and I took one of the shades, I believe, out of the, the Melt Blueprint palette you see sitting back there to make it look the way I did. This is the palette I was telling you about earlier when you saw that note on my um, wall from Lior. This is the palette I bought from her. Next, I have the Blueprint palette. And as you can see, mine's been changed around a bit. So what I did was I took all the shades out of the, um, what is that palette? The Millennial Pinks palette that were um, more on the grungy side and just put them in here instead because I felt like they would go better in here. I wish I could find a shade to switch this out with, but it's just going to have to stay the way it is, which, you know, would be fine because they know they thought the browns and the blues went together nicely. So you just put this with one of the blues and call it a day or it could just sit there like it's going to because I don't plan on using it with any of these shades, but I think it looks much cooler like this as opposed to the brown and the um, blue that they had set up, but, you know. This is my palette that you can change them out. I sure did. Next, I have the long palette. So, if you all remember my 420s at my grandmother's house, but the rest of them I have here at home. So, let's scoot these back and start off. This is my Mary Jane palette. I did switch this around a little bit as well. I took the black from the original Gemini palette because if you all didn't notice, I have another Gemini palette. Where are those in there? I have Gemini and Gemini too. What are these? But anyway, um, that shade came out of there and trying to think did i take any other shade out of there i don't think i took any other shade out of here i think i literally just wanted a black in here so i took one of these lighter color shades like this and put a black in to complete the palette and make it more to my liking so that's what she looks like oh here they are i was gonna say because i know i have gemini one and two i'll show you those last oh let's just let this one there next we have millennial pinks i changed my millennial pinks around as well as you all know from seeing the blueprint i took the shades out so what i did was I think I took this one from, well, I'm pretty sure I took this one from the um, Blueprint palette as well. And the rest of the greens in here either came from the 420. Like you can tell, this one came from 420 because it has the chronic plan in it. And then I took this from Millennial. Uh, I put this from Gemini and this from Gemini. So these two came from the original Gemini. This came from the um, Blueprint palette. And then this came from the 420 palette. And that's how you get this color story. I think it actually looks pretty nice. I just couldn't, I just didn't want to leave this empty. So that's why I put this bronze shade in there. Because I don't feel like it necessarily goes. But I guess it can go with these two shades right here. And then this deeper green, or this deeper green can go with the pinks that are in here. Which is why I put it together the way I did. Because I was inspired by the, um... Angie's palette and then the um what is the other palette called the um flower punk palette from um Kaleidos to make that palette look the way it does so of course you can't have a melt collection video without Vita and Morte funny story Morte is the one I bought first I did not buy Vita at all until it went on sale at uh where is it um, Sephora for like 30 bucks it was on the cleaners rack and that's when I went ahead and bought it I had no intention on buying it as a general rule but I was like once I found out at school I was like I should probably go ahead and get that but this was the one I was most excited for I told y'all a story about how I contacted Mel via Instagram because I didn't get my code like I was supposed to and I was not missing out on this palette like this screams me in a color story it has my greens it has my blues and it has these reds because it's Christmas time and then that way you can incorporate them with the other shades but this is absolutely sunny and I had to have it and I was gonna have it what I was not going to do is miss out on this palette. I know my friend DIY Panther here on YouTube. She missed out on it. And she's still mourning about it. But I'm like, you got to grab Mel while it's hot, girl. Because it ain't coming back. So you better grab it. With this Vita palette. Um, as you can see, this isn't really my color aesthetic. Because it's like bright, more warm tones. Because I like these taupey-ish looking cool shades right here but it's like i don't really care about this and it's already red in the other one and then like these greens are in the 420 so it's like to me this palette isn't really needed i mean i know 420 hadn't came out yet but still i just never felt like i really needed this palette so as you can see it's not nearly as loved as morte because i feel like morte looks dirty and this doesn't look dirty because i just wasn't as concerned about it as i was with my, my morte palette but i have it all the same and that's fine and dandy so i got the new gemini palette because i actually my old Gemini palette, the packaging fell apart on it. Like, the glue fell off here. And when you open it, like, the magnet just sticks to this part. It doesn't um, close on its own. So, this came out just in time for me to get a fresh one to add to my collection. And now you see what I'm talking about, right? Because this green and that green you saw in another palette. And then this you saw in another in the um, brunette palette. Cause I, uh, or brunette palette. Because I um, got rid of it. So, this is what the full palette looks like on its own. Um, I'm trying to decide if I should keep it in this box or not. I guess I'll go ahead and keep it in there for now. 
because it's not what I reach for that often, believe it or not, just because, you know, I got plenty of green palettes and it's not measuring my aesthetic for green palettes. This is Gemini 2. It easily reminds me of the Meet Me in the Underworld palette from Lois Cosmetics. That's what this reminds me of when I initially, um, not when I initially saw it, but when I first saw it, I was like, oh, it's just like a red tone version of the original Gemini, I guess. And then that's when I got the thought process that, oh, this looks really similar to the Meet Me in the Underworld palette. And if you all want to see that, I'll try to remember to link that above too, because I did a battle above. So when I have a palette in my collection, I feel like it's similar to something else I already own. And I think you might all might own it based on watching my video or watching someone else's video. I try to make sure I give you alternatives to it. So I already gave you alternatives to this one and gave you a video of the comparisons to it. And you can hear my thoughts about that. Because you saw the um, Meet Me in the Underworld palette in the second eyeshadow palette collection video y'all be getting up in the end time just like last time next we have my beetlejuice collection so i have the recently deceased and the waiting room i think tina only bought the waiting room if i remember correctly because she was talking about she wasn't gonna buy it at all but she went in the store and saw it and she said no one else could find the store anywhere so she said it gave her a sign to buy it and i love this acrylic packaging that's why i love kirsten is doing that with her brand because i think it's simply stunning now her hers isn't like this bright crazy color but you know it still looks nice and this is what the palette looks like on the inside but now you see why people say milk repeats color stories a lot because think about it how many times have you seen a, you just saw that in um gemini you just saw something similar to this in 420 in my first video and you saw a shimmer similar to this and i don't know if you saw a shimmer similar to this and i feel like it might be in more to that i just showed and then you got all these purples now the only thing i feel like they haven't done a lot of is purples so i guess that's okay but it's like you know the top row has already been repeated in this brand like three times over. Not that I'm complaining, but you know, like for people who have a large collection and want variety, it's like sometimes I feel like they don't always give it to you or they always just give you a whole bunch of crunch. And sometimes you do want a little bit of brightness in your life. So, you know, they need to be trying to give it sometimes. The only brightness I feel like is my collection from them is like the radioactive palette. Everything else, I feel like it's quite grungy. Oh, sorry. Waiting room was turned backwards. Apparently, I didn't realize that. My bad. This is what she looks like on the inside. I feel like this looks really similar to that dark Vader palette that ColourPop came out with. So, if you want a cheaper alternative, I think I'm going to do a 5 edition. I did a 5 alternative to limited edition palettes, and I put this in there, but that video hasn't gone up yet. So, you haven't seen it. So, you're hearing about it here first, but I think that video is going to go up before you see this. Don't quote me, though. But this is what she looks like on the inside. And again, you see lots of blacks, you see lots of grays, you see the silver shade, and then you see lots of reds. You just saw lots of reds in the gemini palette so it's like again they're repeating shades so they do that a lot you just have to keep that in mind but since some stuff is limited edition and i guess if you didn't grab it they're trying to make sure that everybody gets those tones and something they want from them and stand true to the color stories that they love so i'm assuming that's why sometimes it just repeats itself a lot unfortunately okay the last melt palette we have to talk about before we get into the ginormous collection of natasha denona and pat mcgrath would be the um, Moria Mariposa's palette. I did buy a lot of the collection. I bought the brushes for my best friend Jackie. Then I bought the eyeshadow palette for myself. And they had an eyeshadow palette and face palette bundle. And I know she wears face stuff. But she doesn't wear like foundation or concealer or anything like that. So I made sure I gave her the palette. Because obviously the palette wasn't work on me. Because it's quite light and ashy. But this is what the inside of this palette looks like. And again they repeat some stuff. Like these colors are similar to what's in the baby girl stack. These colors were similar to in the brunette palette I showed you. Some of these colors are similar to the Beetlejuice palette. And then you got a row of greens where they've done greens in quite a few palettes that I've shown you. So, and this color looks us a little bit lighter than the one I just showed you in the Beetlejuice palette. So, you see what I'm saying about them repeating shades? So, I mean, sometimes it gets annoying. Sometimes it doesn't. I like all my milk palettes equally for the most part, though. So, I'm fine with it. But just have to keep that in mind. A lot of times you're going to see these, like, repeating shades. That's just something we do. They have a couple of neutral palettes, so if you're not into color, like you can buy the Rust palette or you can buy the Brunette palette, which is the one that I have. Okay, now let's get into Natasha Denona because I have more Pat McGrath than Natasha Denona, big surprise, right? I mean, if you know anything about this channel, then it's not. My little Natasha Denona palettes are in the top up there, but all my big ones are down here, so let's get into those. I'm going to start on these little bitty ones right here. This is the most recent one she came out with, the Pastel palette. I have the rest of them stacked according to like my favorites and preferences, but this is what she looks like on the inside. It's a cute little palette. I feel like it'll be a nice companion palette to go with other mattes because I feel like the mattes in here don't show up to this color the way I was hoping they would. So I'm actually going to take this with me to compare it to another palette that um I have to review tonight. But this is what she looks like. I've only played with her like two times. 
or it was one time for camera. I honestly don't remember. I feel like it was one time for camera, but don't quote me. Um, next is my favorite mini palette from Natasha Denona. This is the Love Palette. I actually love this palette. Ha, ha, ha. But no, I actually bought a backup. That's how much I like this palette. I was scared they were getting rid of it. And I was like, oh, no, I can't go without this palette. So that should tell you my love for it. I have used this palette about four or five times, and that's a big deal. Because if you all heard me in my last eyeshadow palette collection video, if I use something like three or four times, it's a big deal. Because you see how large this collection is, and you've only seen like three drawers worth i'm sorry five or six drawers worth and it's still like two more to go so i genuinely love this palette this is my favorite natasha's known mini midi palette i absolutely love it it's stunning next i have the Natasha Denona Retro Palette. This is what she looks like on the inside. This, to me, is like the cool older sister version of the palette. Or this is a good um, dupe for that um, palette I showed you all from um, Melt. The, what is it? Um, Cheese and Parties Palette. I feel like this could be a good alternative to that one if you're not crazy about it like I am. I really like this one. I'm going to take that over and do the five alternatives. Because I don't remember if the Melt Palette is limited edition or not. Or the uh, Natasha Denona is limited edition or not. Let me just grab a whole thing. Give me ideas as I go along. Next, I have the Glam Face Palette. So, this is the obviously the I think it's dark deep one. Um, I heard the blush in here um, dries out in the light one. Again, since I don't have that one, I don't know. But Morgan Turner says that it dries out really quickly. Mine is just fine. I still use mine. I want to say I used mine like two weeks ago and it was fine. It didn't dry out. Everything worked on my face just fine. The thing I hate about this palette and why I didn't buy the um original glam palette is because i don't like the fact that you're telling me where to put the shadows i have to think about that like i bought it i'll put it wherever the hell i feel like it. i don't want you naming where it is but i heard a lot of people were saying that they appreciate that because it helped them know where to put what so i mean it's good for beginners i guess but i just don't want you telling me where the hell to put my stuff i paid you just 65 dollars wherever i want to put it is where the hell i put it so <laughs> that's my thing about that palette and that's why i still haven't bought it aside from the fact i wasn't crazy about the color store ever, so there's that um next we have the zendo palette it's what she looks like on the inside people weren't a fan of this palette for the formula in it it's not as good as her other ones but i wouldn't say it's totally horrible i only use this side as a general rule i didn't really tap on this side at all i did look but this side you already like so i actually did it short of the look so that way you could um get an idea of what it looked like i thought it was um yeah, stunning but you know i can understand why people don't like it as much as i like the other ones because i don't feel like it's as good as the other ones so i tell you it's like Next, we have the Sunrise Palette. This is the first one she came out with, and I'm here for it. This is what it looks like. I love this palette. I think it's stunning, and I, um, well, sorry, I love the look of it. I don't necessarily love to use it, because we all know I'm not a warm tone girl, but when I do use it, I have a tendency to stick to this little section right here. If you can't tell, I've used this one a lot, this one a lot. This one a lot. When I do reach for it, I just reach for like those darker reddish berryish tone shades, not any of these warm tone sunset type situations. Now I'm just getting some big ones. So this is the one that got away for a lot of people. This is Natasha on a gold palette. As soon as I saw it, I think this came out the year the, the um new news palette from um Huda came out. So that's how I ended up getting to um I think rouge because I had to buy this and buy that, and then I think I bought some stuff from Tasha because I had never tried Tasha before. And that's how I ended up being rouge. But I didn't buy a second one when they got rid of it. I just had to get rid of it because I was like, I don't use it enough for that. Because as you can see, what is it? Mainly neutral tone. So I only use, like, I think this little section right here. And I didn't think it was worth buying a whole nother one for $129 just to use that little section every now and again. Because I, I have dual chromes that are similar to this. Of course, I have plenty of shades that are similar to this because that's my color aesthetic. So I just didn't think it was worth it. I know Morgan Turner bought a backup, but I was just like, I'm good. This is Gucci over here. We don't need another one. Now, please keep in mind, my circle local does not look the way it's supposed to. I have changed the shades around in it to suit my liking. Because if y'all, like I said before, I do not like orange. So, if it's orange in this palette, I took all the orange out, basically, and changed it around to look like this. So, this is actually mint frost from the, um, all the shades I took out were from the Tropic palette. So, all the fun shades from Tropic palette, I pretty much took out. I took out this shade right here. I took out this shade right here. This shade right here. This one right here, and it was one other shade I took out. I don't remember. I want to say it's the um, purple, but don't quote me. But I did take like four shades out of the Tropic palette and put them in here to make it look like this. This cotton candy palette. And funny enough, Natasha did not like the picture that I posted of this on my Instagram. So I thought that was pretty cool. But this is definitely cotton candy vibes to me, and I love 
the way that palette turned out for me. I did the trio chrome over as well, but I didn't do nearly as much as the trio chrome as I did to the one I just showed you. I think I literally took like maybe one or two shades out of here from another palette to make it look the way I wanted it to because it had a really light shade in here that I wasn't feeling in like the orangey department again. So I took that out, but I don't think I took out too much of anything else. Matter of fact, I think it was a shade on the end I switched out from the Tropic palette or it was from this um, Safari palette, one of those two. But that's the only thing I changed here. I changed one shade to make it more aesthetically pleasing to myself. And there you go. Last, I have the Safari palette here from Natasha Denona. It took me a while to get this one because Mel Thompson talked, sorry, the late great Mel Thompson talked about how horrible this palette was and how much she didn't like it. I didn't have any issues that Mel had with this palette. I mean, I don't mean to like make it seem like um, she had something wrong, but like she said she tried to do a gradient look and she didn't like the way it turned out. I didn't have that issue, so I like the palette just fine. I like to pair this with um, the Decadence palette from Mother, uh, Mothership number four. And get some great looks out of it that way or just like you know single shadows in my collection but i really like the palette so there you go i don't know if they make that one anymore or not though so that's something i probably should have mentioned i am not sure now we're gonna get we're gonna end the video off with my favorite all-time brand you should know who it is it is none other than miss pat mcgrath herself mother I gotta pull out all 530 mothership palettes because honey i have just about all of them i think the only one i don't own is number two i think that's the one with the pop of green in i literally own just about every other palette she has i don't like number um whatever um midnight sun is i don't remember what number that is but i don't like that one i do own it though but i am not a fan like if i had to pick one it would not be that one oh here so, that's it. Here it is. so oh i left number three at my grandmother's house because i'm trying to make fans with it so that's why it's not here so I have one, I skipped two, and then I have all the other ones. So, let's get into it. So, we're going to start off with these small ones. I'm not going to take the ones out of my travel bag, though, so you won't see those. I'm sorry. But the only ones that are in there are the cheap plastic ones that she had for, like, $25 in the XCCI kit that she first came out with. This is Levine Rose. This is what it looks like on the outside. This is supposed to actually be the companion palette that goes with the palette I said I left in my grandma's house. So this is what it looks like on the inside. I love the shade Purple Rain. I believe one of y'all... Wait, no. That was the quad. I was about to say, because one of y'all told me the shade dried on you, but that was like the shade in the quad, not this shade. My apologies. Um, This is gorgeous. I love Pale Fire. Let me hold it where you guys can see it, because I don't plan on taking the plastic out, because I don't want to lose it. So that's what she looks like. And then we'll move on to the next one. Next one I have is the Bronze Temptation. I always get Bronze Temptation and Bronze Seduction confused because she named two of them Bronze and the bigger one is Bronze Seduction apparently, but I always think it's Bronze Temptation. Then name it wrong. So here's what this palette looks like. I know my girl Dr. Ash her makeup loves this one because she looks this shade right here that changes colors. I remember Morgan Turner and I didn't like this palette as much as she did, but you see what I'm saying? Like if you look in the mirror, it's like gold but if you look down here it's like red so it transfers from like red to this weirdish orange and shifting gold i was hoping it would just be red but mother couldn't just give me red but she could give me two champagne golds this looking shade it's like mother why couldn't i just have a red and then you do like one of these champagne shades and give me something else but anyway this is what it looks like this is my least favorite out of the three holiday ones she came out with i only bought two of the three holiday ones she came out with and this is my favorite one and i feel like you'll know why when you see it this is dark star and i mean can you tell why i like this one the best but I feel like we should be able to tell. It has all the dark green shades in this. So it has dark ma matter. The black shade she used. I was upset that it was two golds in here. Because I feel like this palette should have had a silver. So I feel like she could have gave us like this um, champagne gold right here. And then just gave us a silver instead of this gold. Not have been happier with this palette. But you know. Mother has a thing about gold. I don't know what's up with her and gold. And she thinks she needs to have Midas touch. Because she wants so much gold. I don't know. But, you know, I, mother, can, next time can we just have, you know, a silver, please? And I have the Bridgerton's 1 and 2. Y'all remember I ranted in a video about the Bridgerton 2. I will try to move that up above as well. Um, this is what it looks like on the inside, though. Um, so this is the original Bridgerton palette that she came out with. As you can see, it has some nice mauve tones with so berry tones. And then you get a bluish purple, um shimmery shade which i was here for so i liked the first one the second one i don't know i felt like it was kind of close to the first one and i was just like what is its purpose then 
but i'll open them both up so you can see what you think see what i'm saying like it just gives more bearish tones and it's a little more red and then she used the mid shade instead of purple shade. So i don't necessarily feel like both of these were like needed i mean this is to me to be more champagne in this shade and this has a different shift in this shade and this one seems to be more sparkly like a true special shade and this is a special shade in this one so it's like i don't know i feel like both of them were needed but since i'm a pet mcgrath stand i wasn't gonna miss out on the opportunity to get both of them so i got both of them i just didn't get the second one in, in what i hoped would be a timely fashion and i you know made my comments about it so there you go um now let's get into the big ones because there's a lot of those so I had to take off a couple of the boxes because they um, came loose. So this is subliminal number one. Then I have number four, which is decadence, and then number five, which is bronze seduction. So we'll start off with these. Sorry, y'all. Probably should have opened up the package before I put them out here, but it's too late. It's too late. We're here. It's too late. So what she looks like on the inside absolutely sunny this is a blue smoky eye level green which is why this is the first one i bought i think i bought this a year or two after she first came out with these in a line so this was my first one if you can see this is the whole little section this is the section i was in love with when why i bought this palette i mean it has this nice black for me to darken up with and this gray but i literally bought it for the blue and the special shape i'm not even a lot it was my birthday one year and I was like treat yourself and then I had heard everybody talking about Pat McGrath so I was like I need to try this Pat McGrath woman and then I've been a fan ever since so now let me go ahead and you know show you decadence now I ended up getting mine in the gold Star Wars packaging even though I didn't get a chance to get the gold Star Wars packaging it you all did not know I um, wasn't one of those people that went on the site earlier and grabbed all the stuff. I waited till she said we were supposed to, and when I went, it wasn't there. But I was blessed enough to get in the gold packaging and then not have Star Wars on it, which I was happy about because, believe it or not, I'm not a Star Wars person. I don't really care about Star Wars. But this is what the inside of the palette looks like. I think it's simply stunning. I kind of want to take it over to my grandmother's house to see if it's going to be similar to the Star Wars shades that, um, what do you call it, came out with, um, Colourpop did with their um, Star Wars collection with their source we haven't come out. I have that coming, by the way, if anyone's curious. So, we're going to go ahead. I think I'm going to go ahead and take this over here. And I might take the bigger one over there, too, just to see. Because I'm kind of curious now. And I have the two little, I have the two um, mid-sized palettes that she came out with for the holidays as well. So, I will show those last. And that will wrap up this video for tonight, girl. I thought we was going to end before an hour and 20 whatever minutes like the last time. But apparently we're not because I talk entirely too much. So here's Bronze Seduction. This is what it looks like on the inside. Absolutely stunning or is this Temptation? See, I told you I keep getting it wrong. No, I was right. It's Seduction. Okay, so that's what she looks like on the inside. This is the one everybody was raving around. It's like a cult classic favorite. I put it in my palace, uh, Forgotten Palace or Once Hyped Up Palace Where Are They Now video just because everybody... And I mean, I feel like everybody used to talk about this palette. Tell me you don't remember everybody talking about that palette. Like, what is this one? Number, what's, number six is Midnight Sun. This is my least favorite Pat McGrath palette I actually own. Like, I didn't like the second one enough to why I didn't buy it. But I think I ended up getting this one on an amazing steal. So I ended up having it in my collection. This is what it looks like. I know Morgan Turner says it's actually one she really likes. But I've never been a fan of this palette. First time I saw it, I was like, why? Like, she added a pop of purple into, like, an earthy-looking tone palette, and I'm supposed to be excited. And I wasn't. I was just like, oh, okay. The outer packaging is nice, but I don't care about this palette. So, I think I've used it maybe twice just because it's not something I'm excited about. I did, like, Tina's Fancy Face, and I just honestly bought it to round out my collection because I was not a fan. Like, Tina did with the, um, Divine Rose. What was it? Um, the one and two because she said she wanted to buy them, but she just bought it to round out her collection. So, yeah, I'm like, I bought this around in my collection. I'll eventually probably get the second one just around in my collection as well. This is the Divine Rose 1, the original one. This is what she looks like on the inside. Now, this one is quite boring, but this shade right here is so stunning. And so is that one, and then it has great sparkle to it. So this would be like a neutral lover's palette for someone who likes me, who likes um, mauve um tones and this one when mother started going rose crazy and just thought everybody wanted rose but she was ahead of the game when it came to rose so now everybody else was following her and making all these rose palettes so i mean give mother her credit she was the one who started this crazy rose tone palette she did back to back to back to back to back and i guess everybody's like sick everybody keep buying her rose tone palette i'm gonna make a rose tone palette too i don't know 
but in my mind, that's how it went. Because you got to admit, she came out with how many Rose Home Palettes? And then everybody else started coming out with Rose Home Palettes years later. This is Divine Rose 2 Artistry. I got the limited edition Rose Gold Packaging. I was super excited about it. Unfortunately, mine ended up falling on the floor. So, I had to kind of press this one back in. And I was upset about that. And I'm still upset about that to this day. Um, but this shade is actually in the... Um, what is it? The Wahala 2 palette from Juvia's Place is called the shade Fake, and it is, like, identical to this shade. And, you know, Mother is not cheap. This is a $125 palette, so if you can find that shade for cheap, I definitely encourage you to do so if that's the shade you're most excited about. But this is just what the palette looks like as a whole. Um, I thought this was okay. I feel like it's a good companion palette for the original one, which is, I'm sure, something she had in mind when she came up with the color story, or maybe not. I don't know. And then the last one I have is this Utopian Dream, which is the last one she came out with that we all thought we was going to finally get colorful masks in. And the mother was like, ha-ha, take this core and this rose and this purple pop and be glad. So that's what this palette looks like on the inside. I am living for this shade right here. But now you all see what I was talking about when I said about Kirsten's palette and how much it looks similar to. So Kirsten's palette looks similar to this palette. I still have it sitting out, so let me show you. You see what I'm saying? Like see the similarity now like she has those browns mother has those browns she has that pop of coral mother has that pop of coral she got her pop of purple mother got her pop of purple it's just mother's mats i mean shimmers just look more sparkly like this shimmer looks similar to this one and then this one um is still so much similar to this one so it's like they got a lot of similarities going on and Kirsten's was cheaper. I got mine on Beauty Bay on sale for like I think 30 or 40 percent off. So it was, I think it's only 29 bucks, and it was supposed to be out in like 49. But yeah, that concludes this episode of my eyeshadow palette collection. This is um, episode three. Next time we're gonna get up to the top up there and um, look into all those. Wait, no, it doesn't. I'm so sorry. I didn't show you these two mothership palettes. So this one. It's a good companion palette if you own the Jackie Ina palette. Um, again, shout out to Morgan Turner. She's the one who actually commented about this. Because I didn't think about it. And I was like, wait. Um, she has a good point. This has the this has the Star Wars colors in it. These two rows right here are the Star Wars colors. And then this set right here is just um, the new colors that she put in there. But I really, really um, am happy that um, I ended up that she ended up bringing them out again for the people who didn't get it. But I also kind of feel bad for some of the pet breath people who bought it because I know I hate when people repeat shades and palettes. But, you know, if you're a true stand, you just go ahead and buy it. And she knew we was just going to go ahead and buy it anyway. And we did. So, I mean, and I would have if I had the Star Wars just for review purposes alone. Because since it's in a smaller size, that doesn't mean that it's going to be the same quality. Because they say Natasha tried to get over with them many times when she first came out with them. So, I'm like, I don't know if, you know, they would have been the same or not. But Mother didn't do that to us. She, she's like, first time, we're going to do this the right time. So, you ain't going to come up for me. I guess she saw the way it came from Natasha. She's like, nah, you're not going to come for me like that. So she made sure we didn't come for her like that. But this is what the palette looks like. This is the um, Celestial Odyssey. And the other one was the um, Celestial Divinity. So what it looks like on the inside. I actually did, I think, two or three really nice looks with this palette. I really like this palette, too. I uh, think it had a nice color story. I heard a lot of people said they didn't necessarily like the color story. But I like the new... Um, formula that she put in this because if y'all remember i think it's this shade it was one other shade in here that's supposed to be a part of her new formula and it's really sparkling and nice and extra so i made sure i use those in the video to show you all how nice and sparkling and extra it was and i really liked this palette so i was pleasantly surprised by it so that concludes this eyeshadow palette video episode volume three we're gonna get into four sometime soon i'm trying to film them every weekend um when i get home from my grandma's house or filming the normal video so that way i don't have to be on camera i just pull out stuff show it to you and have a um video bonus video to um put up in case of emergencies and you all seem to be enjoying it did i show you all these sigma palettes i feel like i didn't so let's show those real quick i'm so sorry See, so many palettes sitting around, so it's hard for me to remember what was already shown. But let's get into this. So this is a Sigma Cinderella palette. I have not ordered the new Mods palette yet. I've been waiting a little bit on it because if you all saw my... I haven't put that video up yet, but I did one of um, brands I buy and never use. Just because whenever I do put up Sigma content, I feel like you all don't really care about it as much. So I have to prioritize. So I like the Sigma products. This is actually my one of my favorite ones out of all of them that I have from her. I like this one and one other one the best. But that's what it looks like on the inside. And it's simply stunning. And it's definitely my kind of color story. So next, we have the Sigma Enchanted palette. This is what it looks like on the inside. It has a cute little garden um, 
some revive mixed with a few dark cool tones that you use in fall and still be able to use in spring so i like that about it I don't think I, I think I've only used that one once. So this is the one that I ended up buying based upon, of course, who else but my girl, Karen Harris. She was raving about this palette. I think she, it was either this palette or the Untamed palette. She always talked about that the owner of Sigma saw her video and liked her content. So that's how she got on the PR list. But um, I I do like this palette. It's just, y'all got to think, it's a warm tone palette. It's not one I'm going to reach for as often. So that's why the Cinderella is more of my speed. This is a really nice palette, though. And when I tried it, the quality on was really good. And I got a really nice look at it. So... I love the formula and quality of their palettes. It's just, um, I have to prioritize. So a lot of times I don't get to use them like I want to. This is the other palette I really love from them. This is Untamed. It gives me um, subculture vibes when I look at this palette. That's because it has a lot of grunginess going on and a lot of dark jewel tone type feels the way subculture did in my personal opinion. So to me, this is a good subculture alternative because the formula on this is really good and you don't have to worry about being really powdery in the pan and all the other stuff that you worried about with subculture aside from the fact that subculture came out how many years ago and the fact that you're still finding tj maxx it feels like to me it's not gonna <laughs> perform as well as it probably should because it's so old but you know that's just my personal opinion on the matter you do as you please girl if you find a tj maxx you want to go ahead and get it but now we have actually ended this video for real this time so i hope you all enjoyed this video remember you all are diamonds i'll catch you guys in the next one be blessed girl bye you'll see episode four coming probably toward the end of this month if not.